So recently, while doing some late-night coding, I asked myself this question. Can computers write guitar solos? For those that are new to my channel, I have a project where I procedurally generate metal music, and it sounds like this. But back to the question at hand. Can we write a couple of algorithms for this program that convincingly plays some guitar solos? Well, let's find out. Quick aside, if you want to see the program in action or an explanation of how it's structured, I'm putting links in the description for that. Or you can click in the upper right corner right now to go to any of these videos. So how do you teach a computer to write guitar solos? Well, imagine that you have a friend, that you give a guitar. He's insanely talented, he can play any note on the guitar as fast as you want him to, in whatever order and rhythm you want him to. He also has no imagination whatsoever though, so if you want him to play some guitar for you, you're going to have to be very specific about what you want him to play. So basically, we need to give him a rule set on how to play whatever we want him to play. The friend in this example is the computer. And the rule set is the code we need to write. So let's start writing some algorithms with that in mind, starting with... Rule set 1. So let's start really simple here. Here we will just tell our friend to just play straight 16th notes, or 8th triplet notes if the song has a triplet feel, up and down the scale of the song. Let's start by just gathering all of the notes of the scale into a large list, including all of the octaves that our friend can play. Let's actually just exclude the first octave of that scale, because we don't want our friend to play notes that low for a solo. We also need to keep track of which octave and note of the scale that our friend is currently at, so he doesn't jump around too much when playing our solo. Let's also randomize the first note that our friend will play. It makes sense to start somewhere in the middle, so let's randomize a note in between around here. So now we're ready to play the first note of the scale, but what happens after that? Well, we don't want our friend to just stay there forever, so he needs to go either up or down the scale. It can just be a random 50-50 chance, but let's make it a bit more exciting than that. We don't want him to get stuck playing either really high or really low notes. We want him to stay somewhere around the middle. So let's give him a push in the right direction to stay around where we want him to be, by giving him a slightly higher chance of going up when he's at the low end of the scale, and a slightly lower chance of going up when at the high end of the scale. So we calculate the percentage value of 0 to 100% of how far up the scale he is, and then just use that to lerp between two values. I tweaked around a bit and came up with these numbers, which seems to be the sweet spot. So when he goes up or down, we should also limit how many notes he can skip in the scale to make him sound more like a human. I randomized it here between 1 and 4, which seems to give a fairly realistic result. Let's also make it a tad bit more exciting by giving him a chance of playing muted notes instead of open notes. Muted notes doesn't sound as good on higher notes, so again we will use the percentage value we calculated before on how far up he is on the scale, and use the inverse of that as a random chance of a muted note happening. So okay, let's listen to what that sounds like real quick before we move on.
Sounds fairly sweet, right? But I think we can do even better, which brings us to... Rule set 2. The previous rule set was fine and all, but it gets a bit boring since he only plays notes in the same rhythm all the time. So let's switch that up by giving him a list of predefined rhythms to choose from that he can apply to the notes. Which notes he will play will work the same as previously, only the rhythm is randomized. But we want it to be a bit spicier than that, right? Usually you want your guitarist to maybe start to solo a bit slower and then finish in an explosive fashion. So let's assign all of these rhythms an intensity value and then use that when considering which rhythms to pick. So when picking from this pool of rhythms, we first calculate our own intensity value based on how close to the end of the section we are and then compare that to the intensity values of the rhythms, calculating weight for each rhythm and then use that to do weighted random pick. So now that we have our rhythm, we reuse the logic for which notes to pick from the previous rule set. And then it sounds something like this. I'd say around 60% of the time it sounds good 100% of the time. But let's try one more time and just embrace the randomness, which leads us to... Rule set 3 Building on the note picking logic from rule set 1 and 2, let's again try altering the rhythm of the notes. This time in an almost completely random fashion. Here the predefined rhythms are, well, less predefined. Here it's just notes of different lengths, getting faster and faster towards the end of the section. It sounds a bit like this.
So as you can see, there are tons of things we can teach a computer. It doesn't quite hit the mark all the time, but definitely sometimes. There's always a trade-off being made when writing these kinds of algorithms. Giving the computer more free hands often involves it writing some fairly useless stuff sometimes. But sometimes the stars align and you get something really unexpected and, well, human. There are still things you could do, such as generating other types of guitar solos, making the guitarist do some fast tapping or sweeping motions. But for now, let's leave it here and maybe revisit this idea some other time. And well, that's it for this video everyone, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. See you in the next video.